Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today, as you can see, it's going to be Stal Fetter for the Sony PlayStation. Uh, this is a early, early 1996 vertically scrolling shoot 'em up for the Sony PlayStation, only released in Japan and uh, developed by a company called Santos. They didn't really do a whole lot else outside of this game, and uh, you know, this game wasn't very well received either. And uh, honestly, after playing through it a bunch of times over these last few years, since I've owned my uh, copy of it. Uh, yeah, I can vouch that it's uh, it's not the most exciting shoot 'em up ever. It's not horrible. It's not bad, um, but it is not great either. Definitely bottom of the barrel when it comes to shoot 'em ups on the PS1, but still fun. It's one thing I really like about PS1 shoot 'em ups is that even the worst ones on the system are still fun to play. I uh, can't really say that for other systems like the Super Nintendo or NES, uh, but uh, PS1 shoot 'em ups are pretty good overall you know the worst of the worst is still fun to play um, to an extent so but yeah uh, let's go ahead and hit this start button here and we're gonna go ahead and show off the options menu and then we'll jump into the game and uh, there aren't a lot of you know techniques to talk about and things like that uh, over the course of this playthrough but uh, we'll just you know try to come up with some stuff to talk about and uh, so yeah here on this options menu, you actually have easy, normal, and hard. Uh, the big difference between the difficulty modes is that uh, there are slightly more bullets on the higher difficulties, and they are a little bit faster. Not a lot faster, but just a little bit faster, and uh, you get less continues. So with uh, hard mode, you get one continue, normal you get three, easy you get five. Uh, one interesting feature here is actually the uh, the colors of the bullets. You can actually change them, and not just the bullets, but the, the missiles, as well as the lasers. Um, pretty neat feature. This is not something you see very often in shoot-em-ups, and this is a, a very unique feature uh, for this game, and definitely a standout feature. Uh, you've got a key configuration, which tells you your controls, so uh, you have two different shot types. You've got wide shot and laser shot or focus shot, uh, and then triangle and circle. Uh, are bombs and bombs are very important for the late game. They're not too important for the uh, the early game But uh, they are very important in the late game. So you got a bunch of different uh, planes you can choose from uh, We're gonna actually play as the very first plane because it's got a nice spread shot that I prefer But uh, these are all the different selections that you can choose from uh, So we're gonna do the Blau Stern and go ahead and hit circle to select that and we're gonna go ahead and just jump right into the game so yeah, you do have a laser shot by hitting the square button, and you've got a uh, sort of a spread shot by pressing the X button. Uh, you have power-ups kind of like in, say, Raiden, uh, colored power-ups that you pick up. One is for your laser shot, one is for your spread shot, and uh, that is pretty much it. Now, one of the defining features of Stahlfeder is the mixture of polygonal objects on top of the uh, 2D backgrounds. It is kind of neat. Uh, some aspects of it look pretty good. Other aspects don't look pretty good, uh, as you guys will see over the course of the playthrough. Uh, and we just picked up a blue power-up right there. Uh, it cycles between blue and red. And the red is what upgrades your spread shot, which I'd actually prefer to get that upgraded first. So I should have actually waited for it to, to change over to red before I grabbed it. And uh, yeah, nothing too crazy here. These guys right here are power-up canisters, and they have a tendency of hugging the top, uh, the, the top end of the screen. And so you've kind of got to wait for them to come down a little bit before uh, you can grab the power-ups. So, there we go. Picked up the red shot, and now I have a uh, two-way. And uh, this will eventually turn into what I believe will be a three-way, and then a five or six-way, and then, uh, then we'll get it maxed out after that. So one thing you'll notice about this game is that the screen just scrolls by insanely slow. And it's one of the, uh, the unfortunate aspects of the game. There are some things about this game I do enjoy quite a bit, but there are some aspects that really bring the game down quite a bit. Um, one of the things is the very slow scrolling, very, very slow screen scrolling. Uh, and so things take a while to progress. Things don't get as uh, busy or chaotic as you would probably hope. And uh, the game just kind of crawls along at a very slow pace. And uh, let's go ahead and wait for that power up to come a little bit farther down the screen. You notice that it's veering off to the right and uh, it'll actually bounce uh, off the right-hand side of the screen and come back towards the middle. So what I recommend doing sometimes is just waiting for it to go towards the right of the screen a little bit before uh, trying to go for it. 
You'll notice that I won't be going for the power-ups immediately the second they appear because they're so high up on the screen that I've got a really good chance of slamming into some enemies uh, before grabbing the power-up. Uh, so there we go. Got to go ahead and just wait for it to kind of sort of crawl its way over. Now we're going to go ahead and pick it up. We got a five-way shot now. So the bosses are some of the main objects in the game that are polygons as opposed to just, you know, 2D art assets. And it's interesting. I do like the uh, the dynamic. And this guy's got two arms that are going to sort of try to poke at me, like so. And it's good to also try to take out its turrets. And then that's pretty much it. It's dead. Pretty easy stage one. Uh, this game only has six stages total. So we are already one-sixth of the way through the playthrough. And you get some extra points for having bombs and not taking hits. So if you're trying to play this game for score, uh, that's something to, to note. The less bombs you use, the more points you get. Uh, the less hits you take, the more points you get. Now, lives are handled uh, very differently in this game compared to a lot of other shoot 'em ups And they're basically handled as uh, shields. And so when I take a hit, I don't actually get downgraded. And I don't die and respawn in. Uh, so, yeah. That power up that just dropped up there, that's actually shield replenishment. And if I pick it up with the full shield, I get some points. All right, just upgraded my laser. You see the laser's bigger now. The laser is a lot more powerful than my spread shot, but the spread shot's a lot better for taking on a lot of the popcorn enemies you'll see in the game. Popcorn enemies, uh, that's a description for enemies in shmups. A general description for enemies that usually take a hit or two to destroy. Usually, uh, I look at popcorn enemies as enemies that usually take one hit. They, you can just rip right through them. And it's very satisfying, you know, they usually come out in groups, large groups, and so you can just mow right through them, and it's very satisfying. And that's one reason why I wanted to pick this particular ship, is that it's got a really good spread shot, which is great for all the popcorn enemies in the game. Now, unfortunately, the spread shot's not the best for bigger enemies. Alright, one more blue, blue pickup, and we're probably maxed out. Uh, we're already maxed out on our spread shot. Uh, this is as large as it gets. So the next one I want to pick up is blue. And now our blue is maxed out as well. Nice, direct, focused laser. It does a lot of damage. One thing I do like about some of these stages, though, is that you can destroy background objects like uh, these plants and trees. And they leave these nice sparkling effects in the background that's reminiscent of some old MS-DOS shoot-'em-ups. So while the game isn't the most exciting thing out there, it's, you know, it's still mildly enjoyable. There are some things I do enjoy about it. And uh, it's not one that you hear people talk about very often, and for good reason. Uh, apparently reviews of it were pretty dismal back in the day. Um, and uh, it didn't really sell all that well. And uh, since it was left in Japan, you know, it was... Really, only people that imported the game, you know, know about it. And, uh... Because of it not being terribly common, you don't see it come up for sale very often. And so, yeah, it's not one that, uh... You really hear about much on the internet. I actually did some searching of it on YouTube... Before doing this playthrough, and there was only one dedicated long play of it, and only one dedicated let's play. And then there was one review. And that's it. Uh, that's pretty, pretty small by YouTube standards. Uh, so, definitely a relatively obscure title. So it's cool to be able to show it off on my channel. Following up on another one that's pretty obscure, 210 Kaku, which I just recently did a Let's Play of as well. I personally think 210 Kaku is more enjoyable. Because there's more going on in the game, especially on the, the Maniac mode. Uh... But both are usually considered to be kind of like bottom-of-the-barrel shooters for the system. 
Well, I'm not sure if I agree uh, with that statement for 210 Kaku because uh, it does have a, a more of like a Sonic Wings and Arrow Fighters vibe to it, which is welcome in my opinion. All right, so phase two of this guy. I'm gonna just go ahead and just stay off to the side here. I do like some of those 3D transitions, though. I'm a sucker for that type of stuff. It's pretty neat. And I'm gonna save my bombs uh, unless I really have to use them later. Now bombs do make you invincible for a few seconds, which is nice. Much like two Tenkaku. But the invincibility lasts way less in this game. So you've got to be careful about when you use a bomb and uh, how long you take advantage of that invincibility. And there we go. Stage two down. Four more to go. So we got even more bomb points at time because we do have more bombs on hand. So again, if you're playing for score, gotta save those bombs. Although I don't really care about my score right now. I'm mainly just playing for survival, trying to go through the game. I'd like to get a one credit clear. Uh, I don't make any guarantees as always, but you know, it would be nice if I get a one credit clear. Now I'm pretty sure uh, different ships in this game have different shield allotments. I'm pretty sure I've picked a different character and only had like three slots in my shield bar. Uh, which is kind of odd. Uh, so, this Blau Stern character is pretty good because you get five shield slots, which means you basically get five lives. But again, your shield can be replenished. So, even if you take a hit, you can, uh, you know, you can get your health back. So, these ships down below, they actually fly up to my level, and then I want to go ahead and use my laser on them. The laser is a lot more powerful than my spread shot. And again, right here, this is a health pickup. Didn't really need it, so we just got points for it instead. And same thing as before. Should use our laser. Some of the other ships in the game, instead of having a, uh, you know, a spread shot like this, they've sort of got a spread laser. Uh, and I'm not really a fan of those weapons at all. Uh, it's a little bit like this laser, except it's four tiny ones that, like, sort of curve out and then go straight up the screen. And, you know, they do decent damage, but they're not very satisfying to use. I prefer just a traditional spread shot like this. It's a, a little Raiden-like, actually, and I feel like this game took a little bit of inspiration from the Raiden series. With some of its art assets, as well as uh, some of its firepower. Some of its firepower, not all. <laughs> Alright, another shield pickup right there. Gotta go ahead and grab it just for points. Lots of bullets. Go ahead and use a bomb. There's no way I was going to avoid that. But what was nice is that there was already a bomb pickup on the screen. And so I was able to just replenish that bomb immediately. And what you'll find with this game is that it hands out power-ups like candy on Halloween. So I'm, I'm actually maxed out on bombs right now. It's another health refill right there. Yeah, it hands out it hands out power ups like crazy, which is nice. I, I'm not going to complain. And if I wanted to destroy all those enemies using a bomb, probably would have been the best bet. And just take advantage of that spread shot. 
Now, one thing I haven't complained about yet, but I will eventually, is poor hitboxes. This game's uh, ship hitboxes are not very good. Uh, it's... yeah. Trying to do fine-tuned dodging in this game it can be a struggle, and you'll, you'll see what I mean once we get to the later parts of the game. Uh, the second to last boss and the final boss can be very tricky to dodge without taking damage. Because of the, the poor hitboxes. So we're going to be taking advantage of using bombs quite a bit later on in the playthrough. I will probably have zero bombs by the time I uh, end this playthrough. Gotta go ahead and just try to dodge these lasers. Stay off the, uh, the left hand side of the screen. Gives you more room to dodge. So now this part's a little weird. You need to sort of like get around to the side of the screen. And it doesn't even let you. So this is kind of goofy. Uh, what I'm going to end up doing is bombing and just moving my way through. So we bomb and then just get to the other side. Otherwise you take force damage. You can't get past it without taking damage. And if I move too close to it, the poor hitboxes will rear their ugly heads. And uh, I'll end up taking a hit, so I'm not going to even bother. Yeah, really weird design choice there on that one. Maybe it's possible to destroy the whole ship, but it's, uh... With this firepower set up right here, it's... I haven't been able to do it. Alright, so this is another multi-phase boss fight. I'm gonna stay off to the side right here. This guy's got, uh... An exhaust attack right there. I'm gonna go ahead and bomb, just get to the other side, just like so. Without taking damage. I'd like to take as little damage as possible. That would be nice. This one's not too bad. He just shoots shots straight down. And go ahead and just use my laser for that. Very much the same thing here. Could just use my spread shot, but again, my spread shot's pretty weak. And because of how wide it spreads out, getting up close to enemies and doing what's called point blanking is uh, not really uh, not really doable. I just took a hit. It's a tough pattern right there. Difficult to dodge, and again, you've got big hitboxes, which makes it even harder to dodge those... ...dodge those spread patterns. So, much less points for taking a hit, unfortunately. Yeah, I got 36,000 points. Uh, if I didn't take a hit, it would be 80,000. So that's a, if you're playing for score, that's a significant uh, difference in points. And as you can see, my score is at 793,000 right now, which means 80,000 points is actually a lot of points in this game. So again, if you're playing for score, uh, it's very, very important you don't take any hits. Using bombs is less important or worrying about losing, uh, using bombs is less important for score. Because it's only like a 5,000 point difference, but... If you take a hit, it's at least, uh, you know... 30-something thousand point difference, if not more. It's actually closer to a 50,000 point difference. Alright, lots of popcorn enemies here. It's 
another health refill. Alright, and some more polygonal objects in the background that are going to try to attack us. There we go. Not too difficult. Gotta watch out for this first one because it basically just tries to target you and then tries to slam itself down on top of you. Now one thing that is kind of interesting is that the music will actually cut out. And when it cuts out, you think, oh, I'm probably at a boss fight. But uh, the fact is the music track actually doesn't last long enough and it has to restart itself. So there are some, definitely some polish issues in this game that probably should have been fixed before the game was released. Another health refill up there. So, if you get used to this game, uh, it is recommended that you put it on hard mode because there are more bullets, the bullets are faster, and it definitely makes the game a little more interesting to play. So we have put it up to the normal difficulty, which is a little bit harder than easy. Uh, the game actually defaults to easy mode. So what I would personally recommend is probably put it on normal the first time you play, depending on your skill level. And, uh, you know, after that, if you enjoy the game enough, put it on hard mode afterwards, and, uh, it'll probably make the game a lot more interesting. Ooh, that was close. Almost ate that bullet. That's why you don't want to grab your power-ups when they're high up on the screen. Because there are a lot of enemies that just fly down right down the screen very quickly. And, uh, if you're trying to grab, say, that bomb, Boom, you're going to get ambushed by all those enemies. Just a swarm of enemies. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and grab that and get some points. It's 5,000 points. Looks like I have uh, eight bombs on hand, and I think that's pretty much the maximum. All right, music's fading now. Does that mean it's a boss fight? Yep, sounds like it. All right, this spider-like boss is not too difficult to deal with. You got to watch out for its turrets. It has a tendency of aiming the turrets towards you, and then you can just move to one side or the other to avoid its shots. Now, one thing you've got to watch out for is the next two bosses after this start incorporating bullets that sort of uh, sway towards you in a homing-like manner. You also notice that this guy has homing missiles, and it's not really a common mechanic in this game, homing missiles, but they can be destroyed. I love it when homing missiles can be destroyed. When they cannot, they can be some of the more annoying things you have to dodge in shmups, period. Not a huge fan of having to dodge homing missiles in games. And if you like to play Taito shoot 'em ups, Taito shoot 'em ups have a lot of homing missiles, or homing shots in general. Lasers, missiles, whatever. Twisty paper like shots, like in G Darius. All right, so on to Mission 5. Mission 5's boss is definitely more challenging than the other bosses, and then the Mission 6 boss is definitely the hardest boss in the game by far. So 
some of these polygonal helicopters are gonna come up or appear in the screen. You can see them bouncing around in the bottom. And there we go, there's one. And that's two. Try to use my spread shot. Lots of popcorn enemies. Another bomb pickup right here as well. Just gets it, get some points for it. I'm trying to use my laser on these bigger guys because it, it does a lot more damage than my spread shot. Yeah, I'll take tried to take these guys out with the spread shot, but you know, doesn't do so much damage. Another bomb. Just pick it up for points. I do like to uh, bounce between my laser and my spread, so I'll use my laser, say once for a bigger enemy, and then I'll immediately go back to the spread to try to take out any other smaller popcorn enemies that have appeared on the side. Another health pickup. I'm playing it pretty safe, actually. I'm staying towards the bottom of the screen. Not all the way at the bottom, even though all the way at the bottom would be safe. Um, I try not to stay all the way at the bottom when I play shmups these days, because there are a lot of shooters where enemies do come up from behind. And by not staying all the way at the bottom, uh, when they do appear, it doesn't, you know, catch me off guard. And I don't think this is the boss fight. Nope, the music just had to restart. Nope, now it's fading out, so you must be at the boss fight. Now this guy's got a flamethrower that can be pretty nasty. So if I stay at the bottom right-hand portion of the screen, I should be able to avoid it on his first phase. But he's got a second phase where he gets a little bit closer to you and it's harder to avoid the flamethrower. So I'm just gonna hug the right hand side of the screen like so. I should be able to stay down here and not take damage. And then his uh, left arm, or my right, Oops, took a hit. We'll start doing a shot as well. Alright, basically the same thing again. And these are the sort of homing bullets that I was talking about. Yep, it'll hit me, so I should probably get up towards the top. 
Let's go ahead and just use a bomb. Yeah, this boss is pretty tricky. It's a tricky boss. And there we go, he's dead. Let's see how much health we get back on the next level. So remember on the previous level I took one hit, and uh, when I started the, the next stage, I, uh, I had all my health back, so... Well, it might not have been the previous level, it was maybe level 3. I think it was level 3 I took a hit, and when I started level 4, I had a full health bar again, so we'll see what happens. All right, mission six, and we got one block of health back. Okay, that's fine. We'll probably get all of it back over the course of the stage, unless I take a bunch of hits. But this is our final level. All right, and these turrets right here cannot be destroyed, strangely. So we've got to watch out for them. There are a couple of standing columns on this level as well that you can't destroy, and you can actually take damage if you run into them. And I think that's the first time in the playthrough where that's a possibility. I think it's definitely a mechanic they should have uh, incorporated more often in the playthrough to make things a little more interesting. Definitely a lot of missed opportunities with this game, that is for sure. A lot of missed opportunities to make the game more interesting than it actually is. There's another health refill. It just gives you one block of health back. It doesn't give you all of your health back, just one. So these columns right here. Uh, it's best to stay towards the middle because you have the most space to move. And I want to try to save as many bombs as I can for the final boss, because it is a pain. The final boss has a ton of health. And he's got very dense bullet patterns as well that are very difficult to avoid. Another health refill. Gonna wait for it to come towards the bottom of the screen, or towards the middle. Kinda like that. Now we've got our full health again. There's another bomb, gonna do the same, just kinda let it, just wait for it. And these columns actually tip over on you, so you sort of get close and trigger them. And then move out of the way. Alright, we're maxed out on bombs again, which is good. We'll probably get two or three bombs right at the final boss itself. And I'm going to make sure that I don't pick them up. I'm going to go ahead and just leave that bomb on the screen. I don't know how long it's going to last or if it floats off the screen. Because normally I pick up power-ups... Uh, ...before they go off the screen. <laughs> or before they even get halfway down the screen. Alright, so... That bomb is going to float off the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Grab that power up, get some points. Exciting stuff, guys, right? It's so exciting. Yeah, I'm just going to pick up this power up. Well, we're going to get some points, and, uh... Yeah, we're going to shoot stuff. Yep. Yeah. Stell fetter. There's another bomb. Alright, boss time. There we go, three bombs. Four bombs, jeez.
More homing bullets. And look at all these projectiles. Do some dodging. Oh, took a hit. Yeah, very tough. Very tough bullet pattern. Right, he's a bomb. Get up close. That center point almost looks like a brain. And that's it. We just beat Stalfetter. Mission 6 complete. 120,000 points in bonus for clearing it. And uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is Stalfetter for the uh, Sony PlayStation. Now, uh, if this does the same thing. Uh, it did last time I beat the game. It's just going to freeze on this menu here or this uh, stat screen. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the whole game. I don't really have anything else to say. Um, pretty anticlimactic ending. I don't know if it's my disc or if this is just how the game normally is. Uh, but you can't seem to skip through this or anything. So it could very well be, be my disc. I'm, uh, my, I've got an original Stalfetter disc running on a Japanese PlayStation 2. Although the disc is perfect. I checked it before doing this Let's Play. And uh, because it did just lock up here last time. So but that's pretty much the whole playthrough. Uh, it's not a horrible shmup, just not the most entertaining one either. But uh, if you're a huge fan of shmups, uh, you might want to check this one out. Um, even though it doesn't come up for sale that often, when I got my copy, I don't think it was that expensive. Actually, it wasn't uh, It wasn't as cheap as I, I wanted it to be. I think I probably ended up paying like $45 for it. Um, so uh, a little bit much for the kind of game or the, the kind of shmup it is in terms of its entertainment value. But, you know, when it comes to experiencing more obscure games uh, personally, uh, sometimes you got to pay up a little bit. And uh, it wasn't the worst uh, investment I've ever made. I mean, hell, I'm here doing a Let's Play of it just for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully you guys enjoyed the last one I did as well, 210 Kaku, which was also an obscure shmup for PS1. Um, I'll try to do some other shmup uh, Let's Plays in the uh, the near future, uh, but it was cool finally getting into this game. I've actually owned it for several years now. Uh, I think I showed it off on my PS1 shmup stream a long time ago, but uh, I'm not sure if I actually finished it on that stream. Uh, if I did, I wasn't certainly as good at it as I am now. So uh, that was a fairly smooth run overall. We took a few hits, uh, but nothing too crazy. I was able to save my bombs and use them smart, uh, you know, on that last boss. And uh, yeah, yeah, still a fun playthrough. I actually enjoyed going through it a couple times tonight to do this Let's Play. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. So, but that's going to do it for me, guys. Uh, if you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're brand new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I've got a lot of Let's Plays here and many more to come. Uh, for our, all you guys already sub, thank you for your continued support. And uh, I guess until the next one, take it easy.